What is up, best subscribers on the planet? Yes, you guys, you right there. Welcome to episode 14 of the San Diego Wildcats. Now, before we jump in to the actual episode, I just wanted to give you guys, you know, a quick warning in the beginning of this, okay? So since we started the channel a little over a year ago, I've seen quite a few comments along the way uh, of fathers telling me that they love to watch, you know, the different series on the channel with their sons. So for that reason, I've always tried to keep things, you know, somewhat light just so they can be able to watch as well. But what a lot of you guys may not know is that everything that you see me do in 2K20 in my league, that's all I play of my league. I don't have any other, you know, saves that I have that I do off camera. Now with that being said, we are about to be jumping into a playoff game in this episode. This is the first playoff game that I will have played in NBA 2K20. Another thing that you guys probably already know is that I take each series that we do pretty seriously. I guess you could say I take them very seriously. Look, hey, I'm sorry, okay, don't click away. I, I, I'm done, I won't do that again. But I do take everything that we do pretty seriously and I think that that makes things more interesting for you guys. So I say all that to get to the main point of what I'm trying to say here and that is that in this episode, playing against the Lakers in our first playoff game, you know, there are some frustrating times in this game. During those frustrating times, I let loose with some cuss words, with some swearing. It is all censored and beeped out or whatever, so I do think it's still, you know, okay to watch. But I still would have felt bad if I didn't say something from the start for those of you that do watch with your sons or even your daughters, maybe. Anyway, as I'm sure you could guess, there were some intense moments in our first playoff game as a franchise. I'm not going to make you guys wait any longer for that. I've talked enough at this point, so we're going to jump right into the episode right now. Well, boys and girls, here we are, the episode that we've all been waiting for. We are finally in the postseason, the Wildcats are finally in the playoffs, albeit against the best team in the league, so that's pretty scary. But Wildcats, Lakers, round one, one seed versus the eighth seed, the underdog. We are the underdog, big time underdog. We probably uh, are probably getting no chance of winning this series by the, the odds makers and the analysts. They're probably all saying Lakers in four, you know, straight up sweep. No doubt about it. That's what they're all saying. Can we prove them wrong? I don't think that we'll win this series. I'm going to be 100% transparent with you guys from the beginning. This team is way too overpowered for us to win this series. But if we could take like one or two games from them, especially if we could take one of the ones in LA or something like that, I mean, that would be, I'd feel like that, was a, that would be a success. If we could push them to seven games, my god like that would be like winning the finals for me but anyway before we jump into game one of our first playoff series as a franchise i know there's some of you stat heads out there that are going to want to see some of the end of season stats some of the stuff that we didn't take a look at in the last episode such as like the rookie reports the team stats stuff like that going to show you guys all of that stuff really quick before we jump into the game because i know that some of you guys are probably interested in it if you're not interested in it i'll leave a timestamp on the screen right now so that you guys can go to that time in the video and start watching game one so the first thing I want to head over and take a look at is our our own player stats on the season. I don't think we took a look at that yet. We took a look at the league leaders in the last episode for the entire league. I think like the, we looked at like the top 20 or top 25 or something like that. But we didn't look at our own players. And as you can see, Bol Bol, our leading scorer, the guys that you guys wanted me to go out and get, he has worked out like like I would never have believed in the past. I would have never thought that he would be the guy, man. He's like been the emotional leader of this team so far. Bol Bol, 19 and a half points, eight and a half rebounds per game, 1.2 assists, almost two blocks per game. As you can see, he shot almost 39% from three, which is damn good, man. Damn good for a stretch glass cleaner, as he's called in this game. Our second leading scorer on the team, none other than the rookie himself, Cole Anthony, 19 points per game. He's right behind Bol. Uh, for that, you know, for that that team lead in points per game, but he had 19 per game, 4.7 rebounds per game, and almost six assists to go along with a steal per game. No blocks, but uh, only two turnovers per game for a guy that handles the ball on almost every possession is uh, is damn good. That's really really good, and I'm very very proud of him. Tyler Hero, of course, the guy that we went out and picked up, went out and got ourselves. This is the guy that we wanted. Uh, you know, whether we start or come off the bench, he's a, he's a spark either way. Uh, you know, just always always seems to be on fire, man. But he's injured right now. Nonetheless, he had almost 19 points per game on the season, which is ridiculous. I never expected that out of him. 3.2 rebounds and 2.8 assists per game. Decent, you know, defensive numbers with a steal per game. And again, this is another guy with 
only two turnovers per game, and that's not bad for a guard, especially a, you know, a young guard who's in only in his second season. Next up, Jabari Parker, one of the guys who I think is very underrated on this team. 12.8 points per game, almost 13 points per game on the season, six rebounds, two and a half assists, so a good season for him, over 50% from the field. Next up, the guy who I think is the true leader of the team, in my honest opinion. Uh, you know, it could go either way, either him or Bull Bull, maybe they're co-leaders, but DeJounte Murray, 12 points per game, five and a half rebounds and six assists. Just as far as I'm concerned, very, very solid numbers. I would have liked him maybe to put up a little bit more points per game, but you know, that may be the way we had our offense set up and you know maybe maybe our sim emphasis wasn't really you know geared towards towards him and you know uh, we didn't highlight him enough you know that might be more my fault than anything next up our young wing that's loaded with potential obviously as many of you guys know michael porter jr 11.1 .1 points per game to go along with 4.3 rebounds and one assist per game on average he had a very good season himself dylan windler a guy who i think has ridiculous potential and i would like to keep him around on this team for a while dylan windler had 9.1 .1 points per game uh, 4.4 rebounds and 2.6 assists per game. Jordan Poole, another guy, man. We just have guys with just that that are oozing with potential uh, at the bottom, you know, of this list. Jordan Poole, 8.4 points per game, 1.2 rebounds, a half an assist per game. Those numbers, I think, will go up, especially, you know, the, some of those hustle stats will go up when he starts getting more minutes. But for a guy to put up 8.4 points per game when he was getting very limited minutes, especially early in the season, is really, really good. 50% from the field very proud of this guy man next up our big off the bench another stretch five thomas bryant with 7.5 points per game six and a half rebounds and almost an assist per game almost a block per game he put up good numbers the field goal percentage a little low for a guy but you know he shoots a lot too he shoots a lot of mid-range a lot of threes so can't really blame him too much for the lower field goal percentage uh you know at least for a center for a big in this league jeff teague another guy who came off the bench and probably gave us a little more than i was even expecting you know when we signed him seven points per game uh less than a rebound per game but two and a half assists per game very limited minutes another guy that shot 50 percent from the field john isaac another extremely talented wing uh but defense that's always been the big thing with him on this team is that we always put him you know usually put him on the other team's best offensive player john isaac with 6.7 points per game to go along with 4.7 rebounds and 1.3 assists almost a block per game and over a steal per game so very good numbers for him especially on defense there's a lot of things that he does that doesn't show up in the box score but you know we all we all know what his impact is michael kidd gilchrist i would say probably underperformed i was expecting a little bit more out of him especially because early in the year we were giving him the minutes he just wasn't really getting it done 4.2 points per game jordan war one of our rookies that we drafted in this last draft class the small forward out of Louisville, three points per game, three rebounds per game, and no assists. Obviously, as you can see, he had very, very limited minutes. We really didn't bring him in until late in the year from the G League. Uh, then you got the man, the myth, the legend, Taco Fall, the guy that all of you guys wanted, uh, maybe even more than you guys wanted Bull Bull. He is another guy who really was very limited. He didn't really play in the NBA all that much this season when he was with Memphis, and he played, you know, limited minutes with us as well because, uh, you know, once he came onto the team and was coming off the bench for us, Bull Bull came back very shortly thereafter. Then you got James Johnson, a guy who, you know, I could, I could take or leave, honestly. I don't even care that he's on this team. Uh, I hope he doesn't exercise his player option because if he does, I'm going to be trying to trade him ASAP a half point per game next up i want to go over and take a look at the rookie report uh because i think that there's going to be some of your hashtag ad players in here and stuff like that and it's interesting to see how the rookies did this year anyway so let's take a look as you can see the rookie of the year himself Lamelo ball 24 and a half points per game uh 1.2 rebounds six assists very good year for him ant-man edwards a uh, guy who i really really wanted to to be on the board i wanted to draft him he ended up being taken by the Cavs, though. 20 and a half points per game to go along with 2.3 rebounds and 3.4 assists. Just an excellent year for him. 35% from three. I didn't even see, but LaMelo almost 45% from three. Ridiculous. Then our boy, Cole Anthony, 19 points per game. You already know his stats. Third in the league amongst rookies. Awesome season for him. I think he was definitely a rookie of the year candidate. Uh, but as you can see... Uh, those other two guards there just, just had a little bit better of, of a season than he did. Tyrese Maxey on the Toronto Raptors. Great season for this kid. 18 points per game. 
uh, 4.3 rebounds and 2.5 assists. Pretty decent uh, defensive numbers as well. Guy out of Kentucky. Then you got Marcus Howard, uh, another guy who just can score the basketball. 16.5 points per game, uh, 1.4 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and almost a steal and a half per game. 39% from three, also not bad. Next up, you got number six on the list, Jalen Brunson of the Dallas Mavericks, putting up 16.5 points per game, 2.2 rebounds, and over five assists. Josh Green from the Oklahoma City Thunder, 15.2 points per game, uh, 2.5 rebounds and 2.1 assists, not bad numbers. RJ Hampton, who we played earlier in the season, we know he's a pretty good scorer himself, 15, over 15 points a game. 1.2 rebounds, 5.2 assists over a steal per game. Not bad numbers for him. James Wiseman, a guy who I have a lot of faith in. I think he will really excel in this league. 14.6 points per game, 8.8 .8 rebounds, and 1.2 assists. Thought his blocks would be a little bit better than that, but not bad from three for a big man, 32%. Devin Dotson of the Miami Heat, their point guard, 12.7 points per game and uh, uh, less than a rebound and 5.2 assists per game and almost a steal and a half per game. Not bad at all considering he was coming off the bench. Uh, Ayo Desunmu from the Los Angeles Lakers, 11 and a half points per game to go along with four rebounds and five assists. Darius Baisley, who qualifies as a rookie, 11 and a half points per game, 6.8 rebounds and 2.7 assists and over a steal and almost a block per game. Yanni Yuzang from the Cleveland Cavaliers, an another wing to go along with Anthony Edwards. That team could be really good if they develop the right way. 11 points per game, almost three rebounds and over one assist. Nico Mannion, who as you can see is injured right now, but it doesn't really matter because these guys are not in the playoffs or at least they're no longer in the, no, they didn't make the playoffs at all actually. 11 points per game to go along with one rebound and three and a half assist per game for him. Not bad at all for the rookie. Scotty Lewis from the New Orleans Pelicans. Almost 11 points per game. 1.3 rebounds, 1.1 assists. Denny Abdija from Israel. This guy I thought was actually going to do quite a bit better in scoring this year. I thought he would be a rookie of the year candidate, but not bad. 10.5 points per game, 4.3 rebounds, and 2.5 assists. They have some decent wings on that team, so he might have been struggling for minutes as well. Next up, you've got Precious Achua. We know all about this guy. We played against him. 10.3 points per game, 7.4 rebounds, and an assist. Jo uh, Josiah James from the Hornets, over 10 points per game. Uh, Theo Maladon, the guard for the Knicks, who I would not mind getting uh, in real life if, uh, if, if for the Knicks. 9.7 points per game, 8 assists. He had to be the league leader for rookies and assists for sure. Obi Toppin for the Portland Trailblazers is another guy that we played against. Nine and a half points per game, 8.7 rebounds and over an assist. Eric Paschal, uh, I guess he qualifies as a rookie here. He's injured though. Nine and a half points per game for him. Isaiah Stewart for the New Orleans Pelicans. They got a really good team brewing there. Nine and a half points per game, 8.6 rebounds per game. Jaden McDaniels for the uh, Boston Celtics, a guy that I really was hoping would drop to us, but he didn't. 9.1 points per game, 3.1 rebounds per game. Then you got Patrick Williams, uh, 8.6 points per game for him. Cash Stanley, 8.5 points per game for him. Here's our first hashtag ad player right here. Here we go. Evan Adams of the Dallas Mavericks, 8.3 points per game, 2.9 rebounds per game, 2.1 assists and uh, almost a steal and a half per game. So very, very good numbers, very solid numbers for our first hashtag ad player on the rookie list here. Here's a guy that I did want to take a look at, however, a closer look, Killian Hayes for the Bucks. Obviously, with Eric Bledsoe being in front of him, he probably was limited in his minutes, but this is a guy who I think will be really, really good for them moving forward. He put up five and a half points per game, uh, 1.3 rebounds and less than an assist per game, but again, he had to be limited in his minutes for sure. So I think what I'm going to do before the start of next season is I'm going to go through and find all your hashtag ad players and check their G League stats or their stats in general, uh, you know, one by one so that we can actually see them because trying to find them on this rookie report uh, is not easy. And some of them, uh, they may not have been actually tagged as rookies. That may have been accidentally done by me. But as you can see, rounding out the top 50, Jordan Nwara, our rookie. And then you got Trey Jones at 51. For the Bulls, the Bulls seem to have quite a few point guards on the team right now that just have decent potential, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's hard to hard for him to probably get minutes, but uh, good to see that Jordan War was in the top 50. And now for the last thing that I want to do before we hop into our first game is I just want to show you guys some of the team stats and how we stacked up against other teams in the NBA. Uh, first thing I want to take a look at, obviously, is 
points per game. Where did we fall in points per game? So in points per game, 115.9, we were tied for 8th place with the Clippers, so not bad. For points allowed per game, we were 113.5. Of course, you want to be on the lower end of this. And we were kind of like middle of the pack, maybe a little bit higher than middle of the pack. As far as field goal percentage goes, we were in the top 10. We were ninth in the league at 47%, not bad at all. As far as three-point percentage, we were fourth in the league up there with some elite company, man, with the Warriors, the Hawks, Trailblazers. We were at 38.5% per game, fourth place. Very proud of this team for that number. As far as rebounds per game goes, you guys all know that I look at this stat maybe above any as far as, you know, you know, this is a hustle stat. you got to be good in rebounds per game. Oh, we were top 10. All right, so that's not bad. 51.9 rebounds per game, almost 52 rebounds per game. And then if you look up at the Bucks, the top team in the league, they were only getting about three and a half more rebounds per game than we were. So we did pretty good. As far as assists per game, we were 15th in the league. So right at, you know, middle of the pack. And then the last stat I want to take a look at is blocks per game because I, f I figured we'd be pretty high on this list. We were ninth, so we were in the top 10, 5.2 per game. Definitely not bad. I thought we might be a little higher than that even though. And actually, let's take a look at one more stat being turnovers per game. You obviously want to be at the bottom of the list on this one. And we were 29th in the league in turnovers per game. There's only three teams that had less turnovers per game than we did the Suns, the Wizards, and the Clippers. So we did really good in that category. Well, boys, there's only so many stats that you can go through before you realize that you can't continue delaying the inevitable. You gotta face the best team in the league, by far, in my opinion, honestly. I mean, Milwaukee's very good, but I feel like the Lakers, even in real life, are the best team in the league. Uh, we gotta face them. We gotta face them. Uh, I'm ready, though. I'm ready for this. You know, it's our first playoff game. Uh, my expectations are that, like I said, I don't think we're gonna win the series. But if we could take a game or two, I'll be happy. And like I always say, even if we get beat, as long as we play well, I will be happy. Let's jump into our first game as a franchise, our first playoff game as a franchise, as the Wildcats. As you can see the lineups, we already know them. For our side, it's going to be Cole Anthony, DeJounte Murray, Michael Porter Jr., John Isaac, and Bull Bull. They are going to be getting the majority of the minutes. They're going to be getting a lot more minutes in the playoffs than they would have in the regular season. And then over on the Lakers side, you've got the youngster out of Kentucky, starting at the one, Ashton Hagens. Kent Bazemore starting at the two, of course, LeBron at the three, Kuzma at the four, and then the nightmare himself, Anthony Davis at the five. We may not have an answer for Anthony Davis, I'm not going to lie. So this is how I'm going to run it for game one. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to have Isaac on LeBron, Porter on Kuzma, and then of course, Bowl on AD. We've got rapid Los Angeles fans packed inside the Staples Center. A playoff battle in the West starts off with a bang right here. Game one. So being an eight seed in the Western Conference, taking on a team led by LeBron James. Nobody envies us right now. I'm here to tell you that. Nobody envies us right now. And we win the tip. Let's go. Let's go. All right, boys. Here, here it is, man. <clears throat> here it is. Hall of Fame difficulty. Uh, I'm not going to lower the difficulty, obviously. I mean, I would be stupid. Like, you know. Like you guys have said before. Like, you're supposed to beat the teams that you're supposed to beat. And you're supposed to lose to the teams that you're supposed to lose to. And some nights are your nights. Other nights aren't. John Isaac is going to draw the foul. So we'll see if we can get a couple points at the free throw line. But like I said, man, I'm, it's, it's going to be difficult because they're a good team. And that's the way things should be. That's the way, what makes it the most realistic. Let's go, Wildcats. Come on. Bowl. I know he can make those shots, man. I know he can make them. I'm not going to stop taking them with me because I know he can make those shots. Come on. Nothing you can do about that. Transition D. Come on. Transition defense. Go for the alley. Nice defense. That's that's what we that's what we need right there. Bobo from the outside. Green release cash money. Let's get it. Okay. Let's just let's stick with him, man. Let's just stick with this team. Let's go. Ah, I should have gone back to Porter. Cole Anthony, I should have. Yeah. I rushed that shot and I shouldn't have done it. We had time. Here's the Kentucky boy, Ashton Hagens, and he's just going to float that right, right over our 7-2 big man. And we are 1 of 7 to start the game. They are 5 of 6. Yeah, that could be the story of this game. Do not be surprised if that's the story of this game. Pick and pop again. Money, baby. Money, bowl, bowl. 
You know, it's funny. Kuzma, Kuzma's the least of my worries, and he's like a extremely solid player. Oh my god! Like I was right in his face. Anthony Davis is just gonna be like the biggest problem in the world. John Isaac, throw it, throw it down, throw it down. You know, I'll be happy if we could just stick with him. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that would be a win in my book. If we could just stick with him, bowl. You throw that one down, young man. That's what I'm talking about. I love watching him dunk. LeBron. Come on, Isaac. This is why we have you on LeBron. That's what... There we go. Solid defense. Murray, I'm gonna take... I'm taking it. I'm just taking it, baby. I'm taking it all the way. Murray, man. The leader of this offense. Got ourselves a little one-point lead here. Ashton Hagens. Floater. No good, baby. No... You know what? I, I just might throw a whole fit if they keep getting offensive boards. These offensive rebounds are killing us. Jordan Poole, I'm taking that. I'm taking that, baby. I am taking that. Give me those three. Time winding down in the first quarter. Ugh. Cole Anthony, he can hit those shots, man. I know he can hit those. Caldwell Pope. And, of course, he's going to hit it. Because why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? And that was a three also. Like, I'm pretty sure his foot was on the line but you know I'm not gonna argue hold for the last shot Cole Anthony again man I'm not gonna stop shooting with him even though he's gonna keep missing and that's gonna bring us to the end of the first quarter we're down by six could could be worse I mean it could be worse I guess come on Bryant come on Bryant D don't jump all right there we go good 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 Fast break. Out to Parker. He's hitting that. He's hitting that, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Green release, four-point game. All right, if we could just keep it, if we could just keep their lead to single digits, I'm happy because then that means they're within striking distance. There we go, man. Nice little floater. Four-point game again. Come on, Murray. Make something happen, Murray. Mid-range. Green release. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. LeBron, I, I just, when LeBron's bringing the ball up the court, I, I just kind of, like, hold my breath. You know what I mean? Like, because I just, I, you know something crazy is just going to happen. He greened that. He, bro, he's ridiculous. Well, it's a 10-point game. This is exactly what we didn't want. All right, you're just going to give me the lane. I'm taking that, baby. I'm taking that all the way. Every single time, Murray is just going to take that if you give it to him. Watch, they're going to inbound this to somebody in the paint, and that person is just going to score. What did I say? That it, Every time with this Lakers team, man, every time. All right, let's, let's cut this lead. If we can score here, we cut the lead down to four. You know, I'm feeling a little better about life. Bowl, back to bowl. And one, baby. Let's go. Let's go. What a play. That was, that was a play. I am proud of that play. Let's go. Come on, Jordan. Come on, Jordan. Pull from deep. From deep, baby. There we go. Two-point game. Give me that. Well, they went on a bit of a run here. They've got an eight-point lead. Time winding down in the first half. So glad he didn't shoot that. I do not like Cole Anthony on AD, obviously. For obvious reasons. What? He just weaved his way through our entire defense. Like, Ashton Hagens. Seriously, though? All right, we got to take a shot. Take it. Ah, uh, I released it way too early. So we're going into halftime down by 10. That hurts just a little bit because my goal was to be at least somewhat close at the half. Um, <clears throat> you know, but I want to say it could be worse, but it also could be a lot better. You know, we could be closer than this. All right, I'm almost afraid to look at these numbers, man. Look, oh, God. The deep, we're deep, defensively, we're doing a little bit better. Anthony Davis, 14, he has a triple-double? No, that, there's no way he has 14 assists. There's just no way. That That's a that's like a glitch or something like that. I'll have to check that out. But 39% from the field is not good. Being out-rebounded by 11 is not good. We're close in assists, uh, but the rebounding and the field goal percentage, man, like those are the two things that we need the most. So I double-checked it. Anthony Davis has... Four assists, not 14. So he's got a double double. Double double. As LeBron just absolutely drops the hammer on Michael Porter Jr. 
And uh, I'm going to just continue to be monotone for the entire rest of the game because he's unstoppable. Come on, Bull. If I'm putting you in the thumbnail, you better play some damn defense. Just... All right. All right, guys. Are they going to be the new Warriors where, like, the third quarter comes around and they're just completely unstoppable? And the offensive rebounds! Bro, I'm... Man... I'm gonna get angry. Come on, boys. We need we need something offensively here. Let's. Oh, nice move. Nice move. There we go. Nice little green release. We're still down by a lot, but you know. And the controller. I guess this is the controller's way of saying you suck, and I'm not being held responsible for that. It's. Oh, I wanted to get that back to bowl actually, but we'll get it up to him. And. I. I like. I'm at a loss, man. I'm at a loss for words. If that wasn't AD, that goes in. Bowl is open. Shoot the ball. Shoot the ball, Bowl. Shoot it. All right. It's okay. We're only down by 20. Only de Make that 22. Make that 22 and make that a timeout. Uh, Kuzma's hype. And uh, we're not, apparently. We are not hype. Oh my God! Oh. McGee green that. Oh my! Just can't even. <laughs> and the, and the fact I'm I, somebody kill me please. Come on. Guarantee he makes that. Gu guaranteed he makes it. All right, State Farm, come on, show us the assist of the game. Let, let's see it. Let's see it. Who is it? Got to be yeah. An alley to Anthony Davis. Yeah, no, no surprises there. I mean, that's just sums the game up. Yeah, you know, the reason I can't be too, too mad is because you know, we, we expected this, right? Like, we knew this was going to happen. Isaac in the corner. Nice. All right, we finally hit a damn shot. All right, a three-pointer, and we're down by 18. All right, that sounds not that bad compared to how things have been lately. And you... Are you... You son of a... Pull... I just pull up threes at this point. Just pull up threes. See if we can hit them. Now watch this. I'll bet you the same thing is going to happen this time that happened last time on the inbounds. Someone's just going to get right into the paint, and as soon as they inbound the ball, they're just... <laughs> Oh, I hate this team. Come on, Cole. Come on, just, just take it. Pull. How, man? How? How is that possible? How? Remember how I said I'd consider it a success if we won, like, you know, just at least one game in this series? Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Jordan Awara with a nice shot, man. Wow. Final minute of the game, 117 to 96. Jordan Poole with a nice little fadeaway mid-range green release. We were on a 17 to 6 run in the last, you know, almost five minutes of the game. And who would have who thought all it took was for them to take out all their best players? You know, so that's that's the formula, man. It's easy. If I'd have known that from the start, you know, who knows what would have happened. Taco Tuesday. I see you streaking, big fella. There we go. There we go. All right. It's only an 18-point game, 15 seconds to go. So if we score a point every, uh, you know, three-quarters of a second, we're right back in this thing. And they're just going to go ahead and dribble it out. And uh, it's going to do it, boys. That is going to do it. So... 118, 100, uh, you know, we were down by almost 30 at one point there between, like, the third and fourth quarter, so, you know, we did make up some ground, but again, like I said, I mean, they took out all their, their best players, and, you know, we took out our starting lineup, too. I mean, uh, uh, quite a few of our guys that didn't play, you know, at all in the fourth quarter, mainly because I just want to save them for next game, you know, like, this game was obviously a loss. You know, I probably won't leave in most of that fourth quarter in the video just because it's it's footage of us just falling apart as a team and them just completely crushing us. But nonetheless, 118-100, uh, game one. You know, the last thing I want to do is to let a game like this define our, you know, our first run to the postseason, you know, as a, as a team. Uh, you know, even though we got blown out by 18, you know, we're playing the best team in the league and we are playing them on their home court. 
you know, we just got to come back strong and, and, you know, try to make it a little bit of a more competitive game, you know, in, in the games to follow. But as you can see from the box score, LeBron putting up 35, 4, and 2 on us. He was 14 of 27 from the field. Anthony Davis, 26, 16, and 4. Kyle Kuzma, who I felt like I didn't even say his name once in the entire game, had almost a triple-double, 15, 9, and 9, and I was literally, like, not even concerned with him one bit. It's just funny that a guy can almost put up a triple-double and you don't even realize it because of how good this team is. Ashton Hagens, the young point guard, 14, 4, and 5. He was 7 of 18 from the field. Anthony Davis, 13 of 17 from the field. Just crazy numbers. Over on our end, and oh... God, I, should, I knew I wasn't going to want to look at this. 17, 2, and 9 for Anthony uh, Cole Anthony. Uh, he was 5 of 15 from the floor, 0 of 6 from 3. Bowl, 17, 8, 1, 1, and 2. He was 6 of 14 from the floor, which is very uncharacteristic of him. He usually shoots a pretty high percentage uh, from the field. DeJounte Murray, 16, 2, and 4. He did very well late in the game. Uh, when everybody else was just snoozing. 8 of 14 from the field. Isaac, who, like I said many times, is mostly there for defense. He had a decent game, though. 11, 5, and 1. Jordan Poole, 3 of 6 from 3. I can't ask for much more from him, especially off the bench. Uh, but, you know, as you can see, even our starters, they didn't even play, you know, a whole lot of starter minutes because by the time the fourth quarter rolled around, this game was just about over. So it's time to shake off this loss. There's nothing else to do but to shake this one off. Okay, forget about it and move on to game two. Like I said, we cannot let that game define our postseason appearance. Our, we cannot let it define this series as a whole. And that's what I will not let it do. Uh, like I said, we got blown out by 18 and we might even come back and you know play LA uh, again in, in their arena and we might even get blown out again in game two. Uh, but when we go back to San Diego, man, that's when I, I want to at least make things competitive. I would love to make things competitive now, but as you guys know, man, looking over this team and looking at that team, you know, we are outclassed, we're outmatched in, in just about every category. So, uh, you know, this was to be expected. Uh, you know, it's, it's still not easy, but this was to be expected. But before we end what will no doubt be a pretty long episode, let's take a quick look around the rest of the bracket and, and see who won, uh, you know, in their series so far. So Dallas took game one against Golden State, so they're up 1-0. The Clippers took game one against Utah. Minnesota took game one against the Rockets. Philly took game one against Boston over in the East. The Chicago Bulls took game one against the Heat. The Brooklyn Nets took game one uh, against the Atlanta Hawks. Wouldn't surprise me one bit if the Nets win that series, even though they are the lower seed. And then Milwaukee, uh, who, I, who I expect to sweep Washington, despite the fact that Washington has a good, decent young team that they're putting together. Uh, Milwaukee up 1-0 in that series. So that is going to do it for this episode. I hope that I can put together a better performance for you guys in game two because I don't want you, I don't want you guys to have to sit through something like that again. But again, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. That this is what we expected. I mean, they're just that good of a team. But don't let this make you any less excited for game two and for the next episode of the San Diego Wildcats because... Things will get better, boys. Things will get better. They always do. So I hope you guys still had fun in this episode, even though we lost our first playoff game ever. If you did have fun, be sure to leave a like on the video for me. I cannot wait to see all of your smiling faces back for the next episode. And yes, I know you're smiling because I know that you're still optimistic. But I can't wait to see you back for the next episode. Until then, I will catch you guys next time.